I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about charging your electric car, whether you already have one or maybe you're moving, your situation is changing and you're a little bit worried about how it's going to work. I'm going to explain everything to you in this video. Yes, it is a little different, actually a lot different uh, uh, when you have to take care of your Tesla versus uh, charging your uh, all electric car, all plug-in hybrid. We're going to go over that and yes, specifically for you guys, we all coordinated our outfits today. My, my, my Tesla, uh, her name is Sasha, my, my door here, which I didn't really name yet, and me. So uh, you're welcome. All right, all of this information coming up next. If this is your first time here and you're interested in learning more about electric cars and just staying up to date on what's going on in the world of electric cars, you came to the right place. There's a just subscribe button right there. Go ahead and click it so you don't miss anything moving forward. And let me also mention that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla. There's a discount code in the description of this video. All right, let's talk about charging your electric cars. And we're here in my garage, as you can see, my uh, I just actually turned itself on. My uh, Tesla is being charged. Um, Right next to it, I have my Chevy Volt, uh, and it's and it's charging right now as well. And okay, so let, let's talk about a, a, at least a difference uh, between charging your Tesla and charging uh, other all electric cars. Tesla definitely has a very fast uh, uh, charging capability, which some other electric cars do not, um, and it definitely has a different plug uh, um, that that Tesla's take here in the United States, in Europe, and China. It's different. Uh, in in some countries, it, it does have a very common uh, um, a, a plug that you can basically use for other electric cars. There are different standards and I don't want to bore you with it because essentially you're going to end up with a specific one and that's the only one that you need to know. You need to know what kind it is and when you are buying yourself a charging station uh, or um, you're charging somewhere out and about, you obviously need to know that they're compatible but there are adapters everywhere so a lot of times uh, you either buy one or the car will come with one, uh, like Tesla comes uh, with one where you can uh, plug it into pretty much all uh, other charging uh, uh, stations like uh, ChargePoint and Blink and so forth. Um, so, uh, but the supercharger network uh, that Tesla has uh, where you charge your car pretty fast, 45 minutes to almost a full charge, um, and it's a huge advantage. Now, the network has been designed for long distance travel. As a matter of fact, Tesla just announced that right now, 99% of us are within 150 miles of a supercharger, uh, which is usually in the minimum range that any Tesla has, even the older models. This is actually a regular 60, so that's a little, it, it has even more than that. Um, but a lot of people still end up charging it um, just on regular, you know, on regular weekly, daily basis because they don't have a charger at their homes. Uh, and of course that overcrowds the superchargers. Uh, some of them have lines and at the same time, those people do have to dedicate, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes once, twice, three times a week to charge their cars, which essentially means they either have to sit in their cars or, or go and get something to eat. And it's a personal decision. Uh, but again, it's kind of frowned upon in the community. Um, and so it's, so it's up to you. Um, there is really no fast charging network for all other cars. There's Electrify America here in the United States and Canada. They're just building out their network. There's Ionity and a few other ones in Europe which are a little bit more advanced, but still in the very, very uh, beginner stages there. So essentially, if you want to go traveling uh, and you don't have a Tesla, you might wanna either consider a plug-in hybrid like the Volt, or you might wanna consider taking one of your other cars that may be a gas car uh, or renting one. Uh, traveling in the non-Tesla right now, it is a, a problem. Even I would say traveling in Tesla, it depends. Like for example, for me to make a five hour trip to Los Angeles, I do have to spend a couple of hours altogether supercharging, depending on the charging rate, depending if there's a line on some of the superchargers, in my case, I've decided that I'm actually going to go with a Chevy Volt uh, that will guarantee me kind of a one smooth, quick ride uh, to a destination, uh, still with an amazing, really environmentally friendly uh, uh, mileage per gallon as, as much as I hate uh, uh, using even a little bit of gas. So, but that's a personal decision. Uh, now, um, essentially, you're going to have to figure out how to charge your cars or a car at home. And this is what I'm doing here. 
Obviously, if you have your own home, it's much easier uh, because you can do pretty much whatever you want and you can modify your electric panel and, and, and run charging stations and install it as you wish. Um, and uh, this is where I recommend that you guys hire an electrician. As a matter of fact, none of, an, sh none of this should be done uh, on your own. There has to be a dedicated breaker that runs to your charging station uh, or an outlet. Um, you have to make sure that uh, it's a correct amperage uh, and that's something that your car can take and the, and the charging station can take. In my case I'm not even using a Tesla charging station because it's mainly for aesthetics and just uh, it doesn't benefit you really that much in my case I basically using the cable that comes pretty much with all electric cars that plugs in into a 240 volt outlet here in the United States it is certainly an outlet that you normally don't have in your homes uh, the only one you might have is for your dryer uh, and you know Yes, you can technically use that one, but a lot of times you might have to put an adapter on there because the prong configuration is different. Um, you want to make sure that it's, it has its own dedicated breaker. Again, the amperage is correct. So you essentially still need to call your electrician and at least make sure that you can use uh, or at least share uh, that outlet with your electric dryer. If you have an electric dryer, and of course you can run both of them at the same time. Um, I would recommend running a separate uh, dedicated uh, outlet like I have. I have actually two, they're both 240. Um, and it will cost you some money. It will cost you anywhere from a few hundred dollars to maybe even a thousand dollars, depending how far your electric panel is from where you want the outlet to be installed. Um, in, a lot of times in the garage, it's literally on the other side of the wall. In my case, it's actually not that far. So it didn't cost me that much. Uh, and in, in, in these cases, I just installed two different configuration, prong configuration, one on each side of the garage. One fits my Tesla charging cable that came with a car. Another one fits my Volt charging cable. But that one is actually pretty universal for almost all um, non-Tesla electric cars. And I can even use that one for, for this Tesla with an adapter as well. Um, so that's the way I have it set up. Now, I know a lot of you, you know, so let's be done with that topic. If you own a garage, hire an electrician get it uh get it done and figure out if you want a fancy charging station or just an outlet and you just use a cable and by the way uh here's a um this is a simple seven dollar um a hose holder whatever you want to call it that i got home depot and that's how you basically hold the the cable um you can still get a charging station that's cool they're very cool looking and tesla will sell it to you and even install it for some extra fee um that's not always competitive but nevertheless at least it's from tesla and they they hire um qualified electricians uh, all right now um, as far as uh, the uh, living in an apartment complex or in a con in, or living in a condo or maybe being part of HOA that's very different and this is where unfortunately I can't give you very specific advice because there are laws that govern uh, this differently in different states and definitely in different country now I can tell you that at least here in California we do have a couple of laws that basically say if it's a relatively large apartment complex, I think over six dwellings, uh, then and, um, uh, a tenant would like to have a charging station, he or she can have it installed and, and, and the landlord can really, you know, uh, argue, but it would be at your expense. And, you know, again, that can vary from a few hundred dollars to maybe a couple of thousand dollars, depending on how far they have to run uh, the, you know, from their control panel, from their electric panel. Um, and you have to ask yourself, I mean, if you live there for another year, let's say, um, and you invest this one, two, three thousand dollars into a charging station that essentially is gonna be given as a gift to your landlord, do you really wanna do that? Um, so that's a question you have to ask. Uh, HOA is also governed by a different law, but just like I said, check with your HOA. Sometimes you know you can just work out a deal uh, with them because I mean this is this is becoming pretty pretty common. Or um, uh, check with your attorney, and they will tell you exactly what your rights are. And then it's a business decision for you, right? You just have to figure out is it worth it knowing that you may not live there for, for, for that long. Uh, if you own a, a condo and, or house that's part of HOA, then of course it's a, a, an easier decision and it's investment into your own property, but then you have uh, to maybe go through some uh, permissions and, and paperwork with your HOA. So definitely check on that, but just know you might have some rights uh, and they may not say no to you if you're willing to go with it. Um, now, a lot of people also charge at work and uh, that's a little tricky, right? Because obviously you may not keep your job for as long as maybe your car lease or car ownership. And then if you, if you end up not being able to charge at work, let's say your new office uh, doesn't have that, 
uh, you might want to have a backup plan for that. Or you might even move locations and offices if you work for the same company and they may not have those chargers there. Um, there are other two problems. Uh, a lot of them now are not free. You actually have to pay. And that is actually not a cheap uh, rate that a lot of these uh, paid uh, like charge point and blink um, uh, networks will charge you. So you have to kind of figure it out if it's worth it or maybe you just want to just go ahead and install one at your, at, at your place. Um, and also a lot of times uh, there's a schedule there's a schedule that, that the company would have for how long you can uh, uh, stay in that spot and charge your car because there's so many cars and a lot of times it's more than the charging spots that you kind of have to share it and you may not get the full charge that you want. Um, so this is all you have to consider. But again, uh, superchargers for Tesla, fast charging networks that are growing for all other cars and, and at work charging. Um, same goes with shopping malls, charging and so forth. Um, it is all nice to have. I would not count on any of that. And I would make sure that if you are buying, especially all electric car, that you have something going on at the place where you live. I know for some of you, you might say, listen, there's nothing I can do. I just cannot have a charging station here and period. And unfortunately, this may not be the right time for you to buy an all electric car, or you might want to go with a plug-in hybrid, uh, which is still a much better choice than a gas car, obviously. And then maybe grow into another, you know, maybe you'll buy a home or maybe you will end up uh, getting a job or, or moving somewhere when there is a charging station. Um, and uh, it, it is a very personal decision for you. So I hope I kind of outline what is what really your choices are. And most importantly, what challenges you're going to have to solve. I can't solve them for you, obviously, in this video. This is more like outlining what you need to think about it, what decisions you need to make for yourselves. Let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, there's a comment section that I usually scan and uh, definitely um, uh, post in there. Uh, uh, other uh, other audience members and myself will 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 try to answer them for you. Or maybe I'll make another video as a follow up video to this one. So I hope I hope this makes sense for you guys. Um, once again, don't forget to subscribe if you want to have more information like this one uh, moving forward as you're purchasing your very first electric car, or you just want to stay up to date on what's going on with the technology. I do videos every day, so this may be actually, if not beneficial, at the very least entertaining for you. So uh, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, hope to see you next time. Other than that, remember to stay charged.